All right, everybody, so we got a piece of Dallas history, Richard's history, and uh, more importantly, magazine history from the 70s. We got it here. It sustained a little bit of damage, but we're gonna build the whole thing anyway. So stay tuned and watch this because we're gonna tear this thing apart, put it back together, and I'm going driving. Good morning. All right. So we're finally going to uh, get to dig into the digger. Yeah. See what I did there? We'll play on the words. Um, I thought about this a lot while the car's been here, and I thought about it a lot when we had the car the first time back in 2011. So I think the best route is to observe and look. Uh, and that means possibly, uh, let's see about this canopy. Um, is it on there? Yeah. Okay. Um, what we want to do is just observe what we have, figure out how it's connected, where everything goes or should have gone, and kind of look at what we have. Take the nose cone off, I guess. This piece, um, I don't know how they were planning on making it stay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's still a bolt. There's, oh, there's, there's a, a bolt, bolt from the other side? Yeah. A bolt. It hinges in the front, we'll take it. Well, let's just take that off and take a look. Let's, uh, if I remember correctly, we just threw the headers on. They don't have yeah, gaskets yeah, yeah. or yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pull the headers, take a look. Let's look at how they're running the fueling system and how it's bolted up to this transmission, which is a torque flight, shortened, like they'd use in an old dirt car. No, oh, it was a funny car. Funny car. And then, um, just kind of take a look. Yeah, pictures, everything else. Take pictures as you go. Um, bags, we got bags and bags. We can take the canopy off. And I, when we take stuff off, let's just lay it out like we were building a model, okay? So that we know where everything was. And when you're taking it apart or something, because this is just a one of a kind custom car, let's take pictures. I know we're gonna improve what we're looking at here, but my, my first thought would be to just drive what we have here and see what it does, and then we blow it apart. That's kind of my hope, but I don't know if he's got all the bolts in the transmission or in the, there's a big plate there that holds the motor in the car and the transmission, et cetera. We need to look at how that is structured. I don't know that we are gonna wanna take the body off, but it does come off. He said it's just yeah. a pain in the ass. Probably not this round. But the other problem is, is before when he put it on, I think he stretched it a little bit, put it on, it's a lot older and a lot more dry. So we gotta be real careful with our fiberglass, guys, uh, cause this is some old, old ass fiberglass. So there you go, get to work. I'm gonna stand here and watch. No, seriously, let's just take a look at what we so got. So you already mentioned this, the blower drive belt is hard up against the radiator. If we can't look in there, yeah. let's just to be on the safe off. side, we'll have it rotted or, or yeah. We should take he, might, he might can get with one of his Put some jack stands on the front here. Let's see what he's got for a hinge underneath yeah. and uh, pull that, that part off. If you we're get that, I'll to, get one side. You get the other to, and we'll pick uh, this thing up. At least blow out the tank, but check the tank. We can probably just wash it out with the hot seat, let it dry, all that oh. good stuff. What are you we'll doing do with that. that? There's a jack point. Okay, good. You know something I don't. This is going to be freaking cool. I think we can get it to work and run and drive as it's set up right now maybe not perfectly, but understand what we have, and then we'll put some miles on it, and then we'll tear it back apart. He did say yesterday when he came by that the front brakes that were on it were not functional. They were just there. So <laughs> just for looks. we may look at putting some front brakes on it, but I think all they'll do is lock up those tires because there's no weight up there. I'll just go sliding. Yeah, so um, yeah, let's get it up in the air in the front, and then we'll take a look at that. Come on, let's go, let's go. Get it. Do something. He added an extra box right here just because he had the space for more fuel. That's pretty cool. If you, if you got space, make it use it. 
Okay. It's running a big block. Let's see about coming out. It's just hitting up there on that. Got it? Hang on. Is that normally where they keep the fuel tank on drafters like this? Ah, uh, they usually don't run 20 gallons. <laughs> That's kind of cool all by itself. Yeah. We used every bit of available space up here. That's pretty cool. Built that little extra box. You can tell it was an afterthought. He's like, well, I'll get more gas in there. Long steering shaft. That, that steering shaft <laughs> is crazy. This. Remember he said he did all this with a stick welder. Look at those. Man, he was talented when he was young, wasn't he? Still is. Well, when we transported it here from uh, Chicago, uh, it bounced around in the trailer a little bit and damaged some of the fiberglass. The real problem with this fiberglass is how old it is. It's gonna be brittle and dry AF. Yeah, it's still jammed in there. You ready? Just give it a little, just a tiny little. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. It was just jammed in there. Damn, that's heavy. They tried to get the biggest one they could. Did he say what that was out of? Or did he? Or he is that just dirt and shit rolling around yeah. there? The ideology of this being a jack stand. That's pretty cool. Here. It's supposed to draw air from the bottom to the top. Correct. He was blowing air that way. No, he wasn't, because he had a, he had he had a, a mailbox scoop. on yeah, it. Yeah, but he, did, he said that didn't work. It didn't work. Right. So he changed it later on. Yeah, well, look at the old fan that he had. <laughs> so he changed it later on to upflow from underneath, which probably gave him a lot of problems because of the heat off the street, <laughs> especially on a summer day or something like that. Cool. Yeah. So, hey, this is this is what he had back in the day. Oh, geez. Oh, that's what Mercedes or something. Who knows? The biggest thing is, is how would this back piece come off if we wanted it to? You know. Looks like it just well, uh, unfolds hey, right here. Let's get it up. Let's get the it's back end up in the air. Back. And we'll be able to see. It's two pieces, right? The back half pulls this way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but. It looks like it's connecting right under here. Yeah. No, let's it's get not. It up, let's get it up in the air. To there. Yeah. Okay. okay, get it up in the air and get the weird wheels off. Let's take a look at what we got. So if you're paying attention, you're gonna get to see us blow this car apart twice. Once we wanna understand exactly what we have, how it worked, how he engineered it uh, back in the day, and then we will put it together, drive it, check it out. And then we're gonna blow it apart and really make the car beautiful and make it into what it was with the first time he built it. So uh, I'm pretty stoked on it. And uh, we're gonna dig into the digger, get you some. And start the timer now for Kenny. Good stop. One hour later. Speed. You are speed, Kenny. Speed. Speed demon. Speed on that's in the 52. It's got all the gauges in it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yep. So we're going to retire that one, Phipps? Yep. The wall hanger. I'm going to have Richard sign it. It's pretty cool how he has everything put together in a, using all the space that there is, because there is very limited space. But it's cool how he used everything, at least in that time period, using hose clamps to keep everything together instead of zip ties or metal zip ties. I think it's cool. I mean, it's, just imagine seeing this going down the highway or going, going to good guys or to just to any event. Take this to uh, Cars and Coffee. There really should be a sleeve through here, but you know, back then the fact that they put seat belts in here at all is kind of impressive. We're trying to figure out where the point of connection for the body to the frame is. There's some obvious mounts uh, from underneath to the bottom, but even at the seams, there's no connecting point. And um, yeah, that's not really resting really. It's got to have some screws coming through the back somewhere. Otherwise, it literally is just on the bottom and that's oh here okay so the wood is attached to the fiberglass and right here through here there's two bolts that support rear weight but it's on a piece of folded and snipped non-structural aluminum okay <laughs> i don't even know what to say about this i think it's a steering case 
So he said this was off a Triumph, like a TR3 that he modified. Uh, so just look, looking at. see how they have to kind of support the bottom. The 70s ingenuity right here? This would be. So this, this wood here. Okay, so it's titled. So he got he titled it as a 73, so he was almost done. He said it took two and a half years. Yeah. Late 60s, early 70s. But there was there was some really really I, I I can't you'd have to look it up, but there's you know Reader Road was considered gasoline alley at one point. When Green Valley had a NHRA event between Moose and the other guys, because Moose was he built a lot of the funny cars and he was in the shop that Richard was in behind us. Uh, there was just there was all all these brilliant guys running around, and, and Mike Mike was one of them. I mean, at a very young age. Unless we gotta take this bro. Yeah. There's one in there. Just one. Double thumper. And mice. Mouse house. Mouse house. So if we remove the blower drive belt, and these there. are the fuel lines connecting to the carburetor, if we can remove those from inside, we could just pop the top of this off. Take the hat off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can't go too much further. Yeah. Right here. They they're like bent inside. Okay. They're just old, crusty. Carb is full. There. Yeah. Droppings. Droppings. This was a mouse condo. Oh, that's no joke. I wonder how much the rent was. So the carb has to be bolted to the bottom of the pseudo blower, which is bolted to the manifold. Figuring out how they kind of assembled this to look the way that it did is pretty ingenious actually, but there's gotta be a seal between the carburetor and the manifold. And in this case, the manifold is two pieces because this isn't a functional blower. It's really just a carburetor housing and I'm trying to figure out how the carb bolts between the blower and the manifold. The natural assumption would be that the carburetor is bolted to this and this is bolted to the manifold using these studs, or they or ran split. bolts through the bottom, like Alan had a bolts that are recessed into the carburetor, and we removed the carburetor by just pulling these. Which, now that I think about it, that's the way I would have done it. Or this could be two plates. Or it could be. Looks like a mouse had a nice little home up there. One, two, three, four, and it'll slide this way. Yeah, but you can't get in there. Huh? The bolts. What it, he was he was saying that maybe if we pulled the outer blower housing that the studs the whole thing would lift up and maybe the bolts go from the bottom up on the carburetor maybe. Yeah, there's a bolt right there. All right, you can see them. Okay. There might be a nut on the back side. Go for it. Yeah, it's gotta be cleaned out. You gotta pull this. In. These are the best things to have in the trunk of your car. It is a poncho. Oh, in God's name. That front cover might have to come off. Yeah, the carburetor, which has a flange that's bigger than the opening here, has four bolts that hold it down. And the only way to access the rear bolts is to undo this cover and the only way to access the front, front bolts would be to access this cover. And in this case, I was hoping that the carburetor bolts were coming from the bottom up recess through, but they, they were not. So now we got to pull the, the front pseudo blower drive gear housing to get that carburetor out. Mouse has been down in there, hardcore. I have a feeling the cylinders might be housing a nest. Why don't we back in this out and Pull Just the pull manifold the off and, and look right in the ports. Yeah, there might be rust droppings inside the cylinder. Because if it is, we, want, we don't want to run it like that. Animal urine will create rust. On aluminum, it's really bad. It's, yeah. Look what it's, it's doing. Look what it's doing. The back side of this thing. Yeah. But if we, if we get this, if we do this motor right, this won't, will be one we don't have to mess with next time around. Right? That's correct. With the money shot right there. You got it? I think he said it was off a funny car, right? That's what he said. Chi Town Hustler? Is that it? Is that the one? I think that's what he said. Yeah. And what? there's a bulk yeah. bolt right okay, there. Okay, so uh, guys, let's get off. I would like to where you back up, you don't trip over crap. So. What are we looking at, Chris? 
hmm. basically a brand new plug, like uh, like Phipps said, it was fired up when it was in there. So, uh, for about 10 minutes use. Don't really tell you a lot, they're not black, it's running all right. I am taking all the rat poop inside of there. Right? Where the rats had a little house in there. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bedrooms. You see in there? Yep. Definitely a lot better than it was. Hard rust. Other than that, they're all pretty clean. It looks pretty good. Do we want to just send this out? Have it batted clean and put together and put on a stand and ran and tuned? Probably the best yeah, way to go. Probably be the best way to do it. Just have to clean it all up. I would not have taken the motor apart. I would have lifted it out and sent it to uh, well, we can still look it out. Thompson to just do the whole thing. Because now we're going to have to explain to him what he has <laughs> so that he can understand it. Um, They're sharp guys. Huh? They're pretty sharp guys. I know. We can put it back together. But, well, Phipps is still taking a part of it. Well, the carburetor has to come out. They're going to want a new carburetor. Okay. That carburetor it's pretty bad. Well, I, I agree. Let's get a pallet and a tire and get it onto that, put pieces back together, let him understand what he's looking at. And uh, these other cheater hoses here that he's got, we've got the hoses that came from the radiator to the upper reservoirs, which need to be above the heads, obviously. And then he's got these two coming out then going to the back to the to the back tree. and then he's got these two coming back coming back in back. yeah so but, but he's also said he was having a hard time with the technology they got but if we had that rotted or, or a cross flow we can probably make and do away with those heater cords um plus we've got really Fan, we got fans that suck like crazy dude we're going low to, well i was going to look also Let's take the heater system out and build it on the ground so we can, let's get the motor out on a pallet. Okay. Let's put all the pieces back together and then uh, let's kind of lay the heater hose system out and take a look at it outside of the car. Just like right here. There's some really great commercially available oh. water pump systems that are like BMW derivatives that, that could piggyback on this for a certain amount of volume, depending on the hose size and things like that. I get it. So let's just go into the car yep. and remove what we have and All place right. it over here and hook it to the radiator. I need to be able to tell the story of what he has. Yes, sir. You want me to take this out to check for bushings and you joints and stuff. So, uh, Mike was just so cool. But yeah, I want to tell y'all, this is how long I've known him. He helped carry my dad to his grave. But the torsion bar setup on this and the strength of it is just, but I remember when me and Richard went to get this car when it was yellow, we had to, we had to set that, I think it was just flopped out but there's not much to it. There's a, what do you call it, Heim joint, uh, U-joint, seat, axe, shaft. We may want to put bearings. You know, hey, if, if, if we're doing the motor and transmission, let's do this all, let's go ahead and do it right if we can convince His Majesty. I, I'd say if, if there's not much here. Yeah, these bearings can be, a, you, you know that, those bearings on a Corvette are kind of pain. Yeah. yeah, but we can buy the whole new Corvette assemblies and just bolt them on right there, right? Well, it's, it's, yeah. you, know, you, you were talking about getting a motor. Dude, if, if, we, if we have that one gone through and then we need one, if, if, if there's something wrong, but let's I was that. just looking at speed. Well. Uh, Speedy speed. But that's, the, if, if, say $800 to have that gone through and started or whatever. That extra two grand can go into something else. Holy cow. Yeah. 
So this whole mechanism is just in a piece of metal back there. Yeah. <laughs> but look here, this bolt that comes out. So when you go to take this off, you don't have to pull that far back. You don't have to go all the way up. What do you mean? So when this when this piece comes off, if you want everyone to take off, that's the only part you have to kind of work your way out. But you can't bend it out that far. No, that bolt comes out. This it's comes just out. Just to here. Just to here. Gotcha. And then he welded in those bungs. Okay. Right. We're gonna go back with this wood because you're you're having the interior done, right? We got all the patterns. We're gonna change it some though. I want. Do you want? I, I want more room. So I want to change that. Oh, so yeah. right now, what I got to figure out is what I actually really want. Well, okay, so, so right here, and we can bring your pedal assembly just a little bit, but you're going to have this room because we're, we're going to do we're going to do a different console piece. Yeah, I'm going to run a we're going to run a tube yeah. uh, and run not that straight up console he had, yeah. and we're going to change this up quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. So the the speedometer you have in your 52, it's got the gauges. It's it's a round one gauge. It's got all your that. oil pressure and everything all in one spot. No, I don't want that. I want a set of uh, vintage uh, sun gauges or something. Uh, vintage. Ooh. We'll, we'll put a good set. Say, you know the, the tack you got in your other little... Yeah. Damn. Cool. It goes backwards. You got a big caliber here. Where? In the Just a new caliber? Two. Two. And look at the old fan. <laughs> Man, all right. It's almost quitting time. Um, what I want to do is, where's Jason? Jason, come here, please. Since you're a computer guru. Yes, sir. I want you to look at these calipers and then look at this setup. Come on, we're back. Everything, everything from here through, because he just made this bracket to fit, should be um stock corvette c3 yes but i need you to make sure so look up a, a corvette c3 rebuild replace whatever and see if all the pieces that we have here he didn't modify anything these are all cast pieces that, yeah right. this one is too so i think it's all stock and he just made these so if they are it's just buy new ones. That whole Correct. kit can't be more than 600 bucks. The later version of this, I think, moved to the same thing as the C4 Corvette. It had like a thin aluminum exterior. Yeah, but we don't want to roll, we don't want to change this. Correct. Wherever yeah. that placement is. Do some computer work and then get me that information for morning because then what we're going to do is probably buy all brand new Heim joints. It looks like this is just a grommet fibs. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's wow. I mean, he obviously made this piece. Yeah. yeah he did make it. That's where his torsion bar. Here, look. It's, it's a torsion bar key. It's just a giant torsion bar key. There's your suspension right there. Yeah. That's so slow. And then that, you know, that piece that was up here on that firewall, that, that's, you adjust it. Uh, Why would he run them all the way up to here, though? Why I, wouldn't you have them back there? Because I don't know how well you can make one of those. Like you weld, you can't cut them and weld them, I don't think. No. We could find the application. If, I mean, it said it's a dart, a Dodge Swinger, I think. They make, they make aftermarket stuff. For Let's look at brakes first. Time joints and everything are easy, uh, but all of them, every one of them on this car are worn out. Yeah. Damn it. So much fun. I feel like this is supposed to be more fun for the viewer, but I'm actually trying to think of what I want to do not out here just goofing around like they think I do. See the aircraft primer under the paint on the frame? I love yeah. that. And back back in the day, dragsters and funny cars, they painted their frames. You know, with Imran, your tough stuff. Well, it wasn't until Daryl Gwynn took his car over to England and it bounced. It cracked. We couldn't see it because of the paint. So now they don't paint them. So they can, they can inspect it a lot better. How does the back of the body come off? There's some braces yeah, in the middle, well, right here. Real close. Yeah, it's right wood. there. Yep. These are dried out wood, wood, wood. Dried. I don't know. I don't know if they're real ones. Unless you're going to have powder coat at the frame. 
but I don't know if somebody has a, I'm sure Crosslink has an oven that long. Is so. your vision to replace or, or keep the wood, or is it to lighten it up a little bit, use some aluminum panels stiffened and, and carpet it? Eventually, we're going to make it into a show car, but for right now, I want to make it run and drive properly. Let me think about it overnight. It's almost quitting time. Let's look at these brake components and make sure that we can get just all new shit. Understood. And we're going to need all these U, all these uh, U joints, U joints, yeah. and and heim joints. But we can make a collection of those. We can see how the body comes off now. The steering is tricky trick for sure. I thought he said. Did he, did he say he wanted to make this where he could unbolt it and put a shorter on it? He but said he thought he it. had it where it was shorter. No, I don't see it anywhere. Okay. All right. Let's check that shit out and uh, for both sides. Clean up okay. for right now. The area fits. Leave everything where it's at. We'll know more tomorrow. What are you doing over here? Uh, Cleaning the gasket surface. Useful blower. So that is I'm gonna do that. At front. Okay. Yeah. We we'll get sandwich between here. And that one. Okay. He's got it blocked off. This yeah. is just spinning with no no propeller. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Because I've done this before. Just clean that up on the inside as much as I can. Because we're going to want all those polished. All <laughs> there. What size carburetor are we running? Well, uh, we can put any kind we want in there now. This is a double pump. You know what would work better? Yeah. Sniper. Where you go? I don't think it's not going to fit in there. Uh, uh sure. it it actually will. Yeah, you, you put it on your 33. Either. Do we it's have one here? No, no we don't have one there. I say, I say we just get a carburetor, save that money, or something else. Like, if this was a car you were going to drive, like your Ferrari or that's true. your truck, uh, yeah, fine. But this is going to be something you're, you know, you're not going to like. You might drive it home a couple times. He's got a point. That's. Let's just clean it up. Oh, we're getting a new one of those. Get a new one of these. <laughs> clean everything as best we can. Order a gasket set for everything. Let's get the gaskets here. Wait, for the like, blower for everything. Look how he set up his throttle linkage. Let's get it cleaned up. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, we're probably going to need to wash these out. Um, hey, how, how good are you? Oh, never mind. It might not be suitable for TV. Yeah. <laughs> I like his face. <laughs> Mm. Go ahead and pull the other side apart, Phipps. Okay. Keep all our bolts. And then uh, the last thing to look at is going to be... Uh, I'm going to lose one. Just keep... Yeah, do it. Get it all apart. We'll look at it in the morning. It's super simple. I'm sorry. Well, then you should be able to do it. Maybe. So, while everything is super simple, it is also overly engineered, like with any uh, machinist. So, we're just trying to make sure we know exactly what he did and why he did it and put it back the same way or slightly improve it. I don't want to ruin the authenticity of the car, but if we can increase uh, performance or safety, those are a must. What's the problem, Phipps? Well, Terry Sullivan called and said, there's a crack right here. And you know what a perfectionist he is. It, it goes down, you, you can barely see it, but it goes down farther. But you can see where they had jammed a bolt in. See the threads? Yeah. And cracked it. So can't we just barely weld that up and throw a helicoil in there? What do you want yeah. to do? Yeah, well, I'm not a welder. And well, where's they, everybody else? But they, I stand and Kenny's gone to o Ohio. Well, Phipps, I think I that it's time I start making a decision maker out of you. Figure out how to get that fixed and get it done. I don't want to slow up on this project, so whatever it takes. Gotcha. And learn to weld or something. I can JV weld. So I'm going to call the guy we, that built the car. And, uh... I mean, didn't he tell, like, you to do it, though, Phipps? Yeah, he told me to handle it. He didn't say do it. You, you beat me here, you got the motor, but did they show you what we were working with over here? It is, that is a wicked looking ride. I know, but I'm talking about the way that you did oh. the carburetors, uh, or yeah. carburetor. I see that. Do you think that I need to go back like he did with an old ass double pumper, but rebuild, or can we squeeze something else in that same hole? Depends on the budget. <laughs> it depends on the budget because 
I say put a real blower on it. No, it's not <laughs> set up for that. It's not set up for that, but this thing just kind of squeezes in there. Now there'd be nothing wrong with it. Just get, lose the carburetor and put something, you know, put a better carburetor in it. Okay. It doesn't um, have to be a double pump, right? Dude, you're not gonna... Just a vacuum secondary. Yeah, yeah it's all Well, bad. that's fine, but I just needed to fit in this hole. Now, right, right. yeah, that's what I'm saying, vacuum secondary. Okay. Because I don't know if the linkage on the double pumper will fit in there. So you're gonna have to go back kind of with what you had. Okay. Um, put, put a new one. <laughs> He's yeah. A man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty trick little setup, and the blower, you know, it looks like it's going. And, yeah, uh, so the bullies are on the front done, too. This was done yeah. in the early '70s. Yeah, bullies are on the front. Everything's spinning. <laughs> oh, it spins. It works. It, it, oh, I see it. Okay, it all works. works. It's functional anyway. Oh, well, I'll be damned. Yeah. Yeah. He just um, he either a didn't have the money back then, or b uh, didn't want the rowdiness when he's trying right. to drive a street car uh, like that. Yeah. If you're gonna uh, drive I mean, it he built this car in 1973 as a kid. Well, yeah, blower's cool, but to drive yeah. it on the street is kind of it's a pain. Yeah. It's yeah. You got to see where he had to repair. Yeah. Right. It's off of, I forget whose funny car he said it was off of. So it's up to you if you want me to take the intake and put it all together. If, if They said they need to clean and polish it. We need to clean and polish it. So I, I was I just going to run it with an intake and y'all just have to put an intake, back, put the intake back together and stab yeah. the distributor in it. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have the distributor and everything. Yeah, yeah, I took it. it. Okay. I've got it. They loaded it up. So uh, yeah. yeah, if you just, it's supposed to have been rebuilt. It might just be pull apart. Look at it. Oh, right. Together, which, which, it looks it, like a newer one. And then run it on a stand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we looked it up at 73 to the third, fourth June. Northern right. Room. Okay, so the, the main concern we're having to do this is the droppings, the rat crap. Right down it's one of the And it was starting, uh, yeah, it's, it's it was starting to hit all this other stuff. Yeah, so. it, just, it probably just needs rings and bearings and put it back together. All right, what's my time frame? We can get it quick as possible. Okay, I, wanted, I, wanted, I still got to get it together and test and tune and, and I want right. to take it to uh, a big show that's coming up. So, right. um, you know, we can drive out there. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's, yeah. It's just, it's a big block. Yeah, it's simple. It's a big block, there ain't much to it. And it's carbureted, so. So you won't have to Google nothing when you do Yeah, it. especially if I don't have to hook now that you No, I will have all this clean. We'll be ready to go. Right. And uh, we can go We just need to get you a part number for a car. Exactly. You tell me what to order, and I'll order. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a text with a part number or something so you know what to get. I'll try to do that today so we can have it. Can you believe this guy had this thing street legal? You know it drives horrible. I bet it's different. <laughs> I bet it's different. It's not so different than your rat rod but thing you had. He used to drive it. He, he would take it up yeah. to Tulsa and go down yeah. to Austin. And, I mean, yeah, and he, he drove this. See the dash? It's got the 73 neck. Uh, Oklahoma neck. Oh, <laughs> now it's been around. Cassette, is that a cassette? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to donate that to the cause. Oh my God. Hey Jamie, I appreciate you getting out here that quick. Hey, hey it's and, no uh, problem. You call me no whatever we need. Uh, I'll yeah. double time it and get people over there. Whatever we need to do. New collection alert for the next two weeks and two weeks only. We have the Digger Collection. There's four shirts and you can get them right now on GasMonkeyGarage.com and make sure you're paying attention to this video and then the next one where we're gonna have Mike Manette come in and talk about why he built the Digger in the first place. Digger pre-sale, four-piece collection, dropping now. Get you some.